Hey folks, Kevin here. Well, it's January 22nd, 2018, and I'm outside up here in uh, upstate or central New York, and uh, Hank and I are out here just checking things out. We're having a pretty much a, a pretty warm weather right now. We've, we've come through two significant prolonged Arctic blasts. The second one was rather short with a thaw once, uh, early January thaw. And now we're having a second one. We've lost a couple of feet of snow uh, in the last oh, 48 hours. And it's up to, I think, 34 degrees right now. And uh, I thought it'd be a good day to come out and take a look at our compost pile. Uh, so what happens when you're in, uh, in, uh, in a very, very cold, temperate climate zone and, uh, and you're doing composting? And you've seen the, the other videos. I'll put a link up there. Uh, with our composting series and all. So we, I use a tractor and an excavator to do our turning of our compost piles. And we, we make pretty large piles. Now it was too wet in the season when I went ahead and, and got this last material to put it up where I usually do. Right now I'm back by the chicken coop. So there's a chicken coop right there. And I'm going to turn the camera around and show you the compost pile. Here's Hank by the compost pile. So I'm in an area where, well, this is an area that we used to do composting all the time. But below this whole section here, down about 10 feet, uh, is a huge hugelkultur pit that I put in two years ago. And, and I've been uh, using lots and lots of wood chips to build up the, uh, the, uh, the soil in this area here. Each year I've been uh, adding more and more, I, I guess, I put the hugelkultur pit in three years ago now. Uh, so I've been building it up and that's a six foot fence and you can see that uh, I've been building the soil level up and this will be where a, uh, uh, an, a season extension like a greenhouse, a hoop house will be going, a non-heated structure. But I couldn't get up to our usual spot way up above uh, because it was just too muddy when I got this material. But the question is, I'm always talking about we want to keep the temperature so it really isn't hitting the uh, up in the 160s because we're going to go anaerobic. Uh, and it's just too wet in here. We have all this snow that's melting and this is down uh, downhill from, you know, the house and all the areas up there. So moisture drains down this way. And as I said, it's lots and lots of very deep wood chips. And I don't know if you can appreciate it, but over here there's tire tracks here where I've come up and snow blowed in this area. So I can't come in here and use the tractor, and I'm certainly not gonna try and do this uh, with, with a pitchfork. Uh, it's too darn big a pile. But I stuck some thermometers in here, and let's take a look at the temperatures. And this is a 36 inch thermometer. And so we're just over 90 degrees in, on this thermometer. Let's go up above the pile. And the pile is lots and lots of uh, manures for, and hay and straw from Purpose Farm. Then uh, all of our, our garden materials and food processing materials. And then a couple of dump truck loads of uh, leaves and, and sticks and all that came from uh, the town brought by those the, a couple loads for me. And they, they're from uh, a local cemetery that gets cleaned up in the fall to get rid of all the leaves and brush. And here's another thermometer. So we're just above 110, probably 112, maybe 113 degrees here. And this is completely exposed. Uh, and it's a extra wet as well. And if I dig in, some of it will have gone anaerobic. Uh, so that is a concern. So, but what I'll do is I'll peel this pile apart in the spring. And if you leave comments about it, I'll make sure that I do do that and answer any questions. Uh, here's some of the kitty litter as we're going through the season as well. The dark areas here are some of the wood ash from the wood stove and we don't feed the citrus uh, to the chickens so that's in here and there's some of the clumping litter that you can see and this is all uh, chicken feed that's crumble and it forms very nice uh, you know scoopable litter 
So all of this will be turned into gorgeous soil that'll be uh, used in our garden beds. Uh, so I really wanted to take an opportunity to show you what happens during the winter months when I'm not able to get to these compost piles. There's probably another pile that's being built up gradually in between snow layers at Purpose Farm that I'll go in the spring after things dry up. And each of these piles that are left over the winter time, some of them are going to get quite saturated, which is going to cause them to go anaerobic, and there'll be some hot spots inside as well. Unfortunately, I don't have a means of dealing with this in a more uh, efficient way. Uh, however, it's still a valuable resource, and if I manage it properly in the spring, it'll turn out to be absolutely fantastic uh, soil. We're going to kill all the pathogens, make sure we get it into the optimal temperatures, as I've mentioned before in, in the previous composting videos, and we're going to kill all the weed seeds as well. I'll have to pick out some of those sticks and all, but they'll go into subsequent uh, composting uh, piles as well. So I hope you found this of some interest. I thought I'd share this information with you. Please give it a thumbs up if you think it was valuable. Please share it with your friends, uh, people that you think might be interested in learning more about composting, decreasing our, our waste, and increasing soil fertility so that we can help green up this planet. Thanks so much for watching, folks, and have a great day. Bye-bye now.